What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. And today, you're talking sports with MG Nas. And today, we have Sixers Talk with MG Nas, episode 12, where we preview the series between the Sixers and the Hawks. So before we get into today's video, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy today's content. Also, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button as we are trying to get to 400 subscribers as soon as possible. So make sure you guys tell your friends, family, and favorite sports fans about the channel as we grow our channel. Also, make sure you leave a like, um, to support the channel and make sure you comment down below to make sure you uh, leave your opinion or your thought on today's video because I do read every comment also another thing too, join the discord because you get um when you join the discord what happens is you get notifications for every single video so if you don't have post notifications on or if you're like me where some for some reason my notifications don't work on YouTube you can get it from discord also before videos drop on YouTube uh, people in the discord already know about these videos actually today um, the live streams I have planned or some videos I have planned for this month um, the discord already knows about it. so make sure you guys join the discord now without further ado Let's get right into today's video. We got Sixers talking about MG Nights episode 12, and let's discuss it. Let's discuss the Sixers versus Hawks series. I'm going to be breaking down the matchups, and I'm going to be telling you guys who I think wins the series. So, let's start off with some key matchups. Trey Young versus Matisse Thibel and Ben Simmons. The reason why I say Thibel and Simmons is because I think that Trey Young will be uh, defended by both of them multiple times this series. I think if uh, Trey Young starts to get hot and Matisse is defending him, we switch it to Ben. And I think vice versa. If, if Trey Young gets hot and Ben is the one defending him, then we switch to Matisse. I think we're going to try to uh, put our two best defenders on the court um, to try to defend Trey Young. Um, and I think that's going to be something big. Also, too, Trey Young's going to be attacking the basket a lot, at least until Joel Embiid comes back, because I don't think Joel Embiid will be back game one. So you got to uh, expect Trey Young to be driving to the rim. And I think that um, it's going to be rotating from Ben and Matisse Thibault. That's a key matchup that you guys should look for when you look at this game between the Hawks and the 76ers. Also, too, man, when you look at this matchup, uh, Tobias Harris versus John Collins, two pretty good uh, power forwards in the NBA. Uh, Tobias Harris, who's more of a guy with more of a jump shot, he can stretch the floor. He's uh, one of the uh, best mid-range shooters at his position. So when you look at Tobias Harris, he's more of a mid-range shooter. When John Collins, you know, he sometimes he plays in a post. He sometimes will take a mid-range jump shot, but he's more of a post player. Post up, body you up, all that good stuff y'all already know. And that's going to be an interesting matchup, man. Um, I, I'm excited to see that. I think both of them will uh, do pretty good against each other. Um, but I think that Tobias Harris will expose John Collins on defense because I don't think John Collins is that good of, the, good of a defender. Um, so y'all let me know y'all opinions on the key matchups down below. Also, some keys to win for my Philadelphia 76ers. Um, in this series, we're going to have to... Uh, Limit Trey Young, and when I mean limit him, not only scoring, but try to make sure when the ball is out of his hands, you don't let the ball get back in his hands. Because the less the ball is in his hands, the less he can make plays, because he is a great playmaker too. So when Trey Young try to keep, and I know it's going to be hard and it's easier said than done, but just don't don't have the ball in his hands, please. He's not like Steph Curry, where Steph Curry is going to be effective moving off the ball. If Trey Young does not have the ball in his hands and you force guys like Bogdanovich to take big shots, you force guys like John Collins to take big shots, I think the Sixers can have their way if you try to force the ball out of Trey Young's hands a little bit faster than he's used to. Um, so I think if we get the ball out of his hands as fast as possible, we make other guys take big shots that they're not used to, make them uncomfortable, I think the Sixers can really have a great job in this series. Also, too, have great turns of some defense. Um, when they get rebounds, Trey Young is one of the fastest guards in the NBA. He can get to the rim in a quick dime in a hurry. He can really get to the rim at a fast level. So when they're running transition and Trey Young wants to run and speed his way to the rim, make sure you guys get back on defense. Make them reset the offense, man. That's going to be a very key um, thing the Sixers have to do in this series. And also, too, the Sixers, we're going to have to take long possessions. Like I said, a part of keeping the ball out of Trey Young's hands is uh, having long possessions on your offensive possession. So make sure you guys, uh, if you're the Sixers, 
make sure that you, you know, keep the ball out of Trey Young's hands. And like I said, by doing that, what you have to do is have long possessions. Um, you, you know, create draw up plays. Don't just force shots with 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Don't play seven seconds or less basketball where you got to shoot the ball before it, it gets 15 seconds on the shot clock. Because that's not the type of team we are. You know, let's design plays. Let's get other guys open. Let's try to get the best shot possible on each and every possession. And I think that's going to be key to the Philadelphia 76ers uh, winning this series. So, you know, just some things, some keys to win for the Sixers right there. Um, also, let's talk about Joel Embiid a little bit, man. Is he going to be 100% Because when he gets back in the series? Because I do believe he will play the series. I do believe so. You know, I was listening to some things and listening to some guys, and it does seem like he could play this series. Actually, he warmed up for Game 5 against Washington, even though he was ruled out. He still was out there warming up. Obviously, he didn't look too good. He was missing a lot of jumpers from the clips I've seen. But he was warming up, and he wasn't limping the leg. Looked like it was bothering him a little bit with his jumper, but he wasn't limping. He was walking normally, so that's good to see. So I do think he'll come back in this series, and I think he'll come back around Game 2, Game 3, but I do think he missed the first game. Now, what will we have to do for the first game or two, in my opinion, that Joel B could possibly be out for? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get Tobias Harris and Seth Curry in the game because that was our keys to winning versus Washington. We got other guys in the game outside of Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons was able to create offense and still had 19 points himself, so which was very effective. And I think this is what we're going to have to do again. We're going to have to let Seth Curry get hot, man, because y'all seen when, when he got hot, it was over for Washington. Also, Tobias Harris being effective scoring the ball this team, I feel like every time Tobias Harris has a great game, we don't lose. And we have, what, 49 wins this season? I feel like a lot of those wins was because Tobias Harris did so well to take the pressure off of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. And I think that's what's going to have to happen in this series. Take the pressure off of Ben Simmons. Don't have him do everything. I don't want Ben Simmons to feel like he has to be a hero. Obviously, I want him to be aggressive, but I want Ben Simmons to be able to facilitate when he needs to and score when he needs to. And when Tobias Harris is in a rhythm, he does all of that. He takes away the scoring pressure from Ben Simmons. He doesn't have to go out and drop 25-30 at night. And I think if Tobias Harris does that again in this series like he did a little bit in the Washington series, I think that the Sixers will have an effective series versus the Atlanta Hawks. Now, to my series prediction, I have the Sixers winning in six games this series. I do think we'll, we might lose a game when Joel Embiid is out, and I think we might lose another game where Joel Embiid is in, but I do think we are the better overall team. I feel like we match up with Atlanta very well. We beat them three times. I believe we swept them. Yep, we beat them three times in the regular season. So I don't think it'll be much different as far as us winning um, against the Hawks. I think we'll do similar things we did in the regular season to beat them. So um, we'll see what happens. So make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the content. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Turn on the post notification bell. Join the Discord. Y'all already know why I said y'all join the Discord. So make sure you guys join it. Until next time, it's your boy, Jonas, and I'm out. Peace.